In this tutorial, I will show you some of the grading features in Google Classroom. In addition, I'll show you a few other newer features. So hopefully you've already watched my other Google Classroom tutorial that introduces you to this wonderful tool and how to use it. But since I recorded that, there have been a few additional features added. You may also notice cosmetic changes to the look and feel of Google Classroom. If I go into my Introduction to English course, you'll notice a few other cosmetic changes. But let's take a look at some of the important other added features and adjustments to how Google Classroom works. First, let's take a look at Classwork. If I click on the Classwork tab, it takes me to a list of the work that's been assigned. And if necessary, I can browse down to see even more work that's been assigned. If you notice here at the left, it says all topics. So right now it's showing me all the different topics that have been assigned as classwork. If I want to focus in on specifically basic English conversation, I can click on that and it will only show me the classwork that falls into that category or topic. And then again, if I want to go back to all topics, I can just click all topics. Now, from within this classwork page, you can also reorder the different topics, but you can only do that from this all topics view. So you can put those in the order that you want them to be in. In addition to the changes to the classwork view, probably the biggest additional features that have been added to Google Classroom since my last video are found here in grades. So I'm gonna click on grades to show you what that looks like. When I recorded my previous video, there was no grading system in Google Classroom, but that's now changed. And I can go here to the settings to adjust class details like I always could, and also the general settings. But here, underneath all of that, you should be able to find grading. And these are grading settings that you can adjust. So right now, if you look here in this section, overall grade calculation, right now, the students don't see an overall grade. If I want to change that, I can simply click and change it to total points. You can also go to weighted by category. So that's another option that you have. So play with those to see which one is best for you and your students. You can also choose whether or not to show that overall grade to students. And then underneath that, you can add grade categories. So I could create a grade for assignments, add another one for tests, and another one for projects, and any other grade categories that I want to add. You can also give them different default points. So I could say projects are worth 100, tests are worth maybe 80, and assignments are worth 50. And then just click Save, and I've now set up a grading system for my class and for my students. Now that I've set up those grades settings, I can now actually start grading work by going either to Classwork, or you can also do it right here from the Grades tab. Let me show you both ways. So here in Classwork, if I browse down and click on a particular assignment, notice that this assignment has been turned in by five students, and there are 10 others that also have it assigned to them. Well, I can just click here on five turned in, and it takes me to a screen where I can grade their work. Now I'm gonna go back just to show you that you can also go into the Grades tab, and then click here on the assignment name, and it takes me to the same place. At this point, I can look at all of the assignments. I can click on one to take a look at the work. When I'm ready, I can assign a grade to this assignment. This person deserves, I think, 40, no, 47 out of 50. Underneath the grade, I can also put some private comments. Excellent work on your conversation assignment. And then click Post. Now notice, in addition to typing the comment here and assigning a grade here, I can also go up to the actual document that was turned in, and I can put in some teacher comments. So there's a nice comment to this student, encouraging them to maybe add a little more detail. I can even highlight specific words or phrases by clicking and dragging to select them, and then clicking this Paint Format button. When I'm done grading this assignment, all I have to do is click Return. Now you can return an assignment to the student with or without a grade. But once you click return, they'll be able to see what grade you've given them and any feedback that you've given them. So I'm good with that. I'll click return and I'm done with that assignment. Next, I can go up here and click the right arrow to move on to the next assignment. It looks like this one is missing. So I could click again. Now if that gets old, I could click here on the drop down to see all of the assignments that have been turned in and I could move ahead to one of those. 
So that's what the process of grading looks like for a teacher in Google Classroom. When you're done grading, at least for now, you can just click this X to X out of the tab, and it takes you back to the gradebook. Now here in the gradebook, I can also just click to change scores. Maybe Febreze here deserves a 44, and Julia a 35. I can just change the grades right there. Again, I should click return in order to return this assignment to the students so that they know what their scores are and can see any feedback. I'm actually not going to do that in this case. Now while I'm grading, if I forget what was the assignment exactly that I gave the students, I can just click here on instructions and it shows me the instructions that they got for this assignment. Okay, I'm going to jump back to the course homepage. Here in the upper left, there's the course title and I can just click to get back to the main page. And now I want to show you one of the newer features in Google Classroom, and that is in Classwork, you can create a new assignment and add a rubric to that assignment. So in Classwork, I'm just going to click on Create and then choose Assignment. But you can see that there's lots of other options here as well. This brings up a generic assignment. And this gives me a little bit of guidance. Let the students know how their assignment will be evaluated. Create a rubric and use it for grading or providing feedback. So I'll just click Got It. And I'll click here to add a title to my assignment. Describe what you ate for breakfast using at least 20 English words. So there's my title. Now if my title isn't self-explanatory enough, I can click here and add some additional instructions. But I'm happy with this. Before I actually create the assignment, notice that I can determine whether it's for just one class or for more than one. And I can assign it to specific students or to all students. I can give it a grade category. Now that I've set up a grading system for this course, I could say, well, this is an assignment. It's not a test or a project. And it goes there. The default points is 50. The due date, I can go in and assign a due date very easily. And I can assign it to a topic if I want to. I'll go with English food vocabulary. And then this is one of those newer features that I wanted to highlight, adding a rubric. I'm going to go ahead and click Add Rubric, and I'll create a new one. If I had other rubrics, I could reuse them, or I could import them from Google Sheets. But I'll just click Create Rubric. It gives me a blank rubric. Yes, I want to use scoring in this case. And now I just need to think about the criteria on which I will base the student's grades. So the first criterion is going to be completeness. And criterion description. Did you use 20 English words or fewer than that? And I phrased this as a question to the student, but you don't have to do it that way, obviously. All right, so now I get to put in what it takes to earn a certain level of points. So to earn one point, this is what the students need to do here in the description. Student uses fewer than eight English words. And I could title this level. Maybe this is failing. And now I can click the plus sign to say, what about five points? If you want to earn five points, let's just call this the moderate level. Student uses fewer than 14 English words, but more than seven. And obviously you get to decide all of this. You can adjust all of the different aspects of your rubric. So I'm happy with that for now. So that's just one criterion, completeness. Now I can click add a criterion to have a second one, maybe word choice. And maybe I create a third one called Spelling and Grammar. And then I would just need to go in and complete the rest of the rubric. When I'm done, just click Save. And my brand new assignment now has a rubric with three criteria. Now, obviously, I didn't really finish my second and third criteria. But at least I've got the beginning of a nice rubric. That way, the students can know what to expect and what they need to do to earn the grade that they want. Once the rubric is ready, I can click Assign. And my 21 students will be excited to see that there's a new assignment waiting for them. There's one more Google Classroom feature that I want you to see that's one of the newer features. And that is, if you click on People, it will list all of the students. And then you can click on a particular student. And you can see all the work that they've done. So that's a way to get an overview and some insights into a particular student and the work that they've done and the quality of the work. So I hope this video, along with my previous video, really helped prepare you to be able to use Google Classroom with your students. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful. If you did, please like, follow, and subscribe. And when you do subscribe, click the bell 
next to the subscribe button so that you'll be notified whenever I post another video. If you'd like to support my channel, become a supporter of mine through my Patreon account, and you'll find a link to that in the description below. Mm -hmm.